159 million years ago in Jurassic China, a tiny dinosaur scurries across the plant debris that littered its forested habitat. At first glance, it had all the normal features of a small carnivorous dinosaur, like running on two legs and a coat of feathers, but it also had unmissable bat-like wings, or pterosaur-like wings. It had membranes between its fingers rather than feathers, like other dinosaurs and birds, and it was named Yi Chi, which is Mandarin for strange wing. Yi Chi was discovered in 2007, and its fossils had well preserved feathers, but the most remarkable thing was its very long fingers, especially its long third finger. These fingers were difficult to make sense of, because although the animal was clearly quite feathery, these feathers weren't the long pernicious flight feathers of flying birds, its feathers were most likely similar to the downy feathers like what flightless birds like ostriches use to keep warm. Under closer study, it was realised that it had a very long rod extending from its wrist that wasn't a finger but a piece of bone, or at least hardened cartilage. In addition to their fingers, bats have small bits of cartilage that help support their wing membrane, and pterosaurs have something similar, called a pteroid, that is a little piece of bone that helps support their wing in addition to their fingers. So if this rod structure was similar to that of bats and pterosaurs, then Yi Chi also had a membrane, and the fossil even indicates that it had sheet-like membranes surrounding the rods and fingers of both wings. So it was a dinosaur, but instead of having feathery bird-like wings, it had leathery bat-like wings. Membranes are by no means a worse way for a creature to get airborne. Some bats are fantastic flyers, and some pterosaurs were thought to be able to rival even the birds for aerial acrobatics. However, irrespective of this, Yi Chi most likely wasn't an adept flyer, and in fact they may not have flown at all, and were more likely gliders. The problem is that it isn't known how thick their wings were, which would change the way in which the creatures got airborne, and how elegant it was in the air. A broader wing has more stability, allowing for easy and safe gliding, but it is more difficult to move up and down for powered flight. However, thinner wings require strong flight muscles to power. Unfortunately, it isn't known how thick their wings were because this depends on the placement of where their wrist rods would have been while in the flesh, and this currently can't be worked out through the fossils available. However, being as generous as possible with wing size and shape, extensive study of their wings show that their flight muscles would have been too weak for powered flight, and they would have been too slow to launch themselves from the ground, concluding that they were gliders, that would have glided from tree to tree, and were also probably fairly cumbersome in the air. Although it is worth mentioning that these creatures are not known from many fossils, and new discoveries could show that they were better flyers. When Yi Chi was discovered, some of these funny dinosaurs with extraordinarily long fingers were actually already known about for several years, like Scansoriopteryx and Epidepsicteryx, and all of these dinosaurs were grouped into a family called the Scansoriopteridae, that means climbing wing. This is because the fossils of Yi Chi was much better preserved than these two creatures, and so both of them had very large claws, including a long third finger, but there was no evidence of a wing membrane. So at the time, these claws were very difficult to make sense of, and so one explanation was that they used them for climbing trees, and the Scansoriopterygids were a group of climbing dinosaurs. And although this very well may be true, in order for them to get up high to glide from tree to tree, when Yi Chi was discovered with the evidence of wing membranes, but also another Scansoriopterygid that was discovered more recently called Ambopteryx, that was also found with similar rod structures to Yi Chi, it made scientists look at this group in a new light. Epidepsicteryx may have had long membranes between its fingers as well. However, direct evidence would be needed because although Epidepsicteryx had large fingers as well, the extended third finger wasn't as pronounced as with the other species, and so may have looked different. The Scansoriopterygids were also some of the smallest dinosaurs known, with Yi Chi being about the size of a pigeon, despite being the largest member of the group, and Scansoriopteryx may have been as small as a sparrow, although it is thought that the fossil that this creature is known from was a juvenile. What made the discovery of Yi Chi so strange is because small feathery theropod dinosaurs, not all that different to Yi Chi, were the dinosaurs that gave rise to the birds. In fact, evidence shows that they were very closely related to the dinosaurs that were the ancestors of birds, although the evolution of their wings was completely separate. So Yi Chi shows that dinosaurs developing the ability to fly by using feathers was by no means inevitable. It also showed that dinosaurs developed some flight or gliding capabilities on multiple occasions. However, 
This isn't necessarily surprising because some scientists think that feathered flight may have evolved among feathered dinosaurs on more than one occasion, like with dinosaurs like Microraptor for instance, most likely evolving to glide independent from the dinosaurs that evolved into birds. And although pterosaurs are not dinosaurs, most evidence points to them being very closely related. Pterosaurs most likely branched away from dinosaurs in the early Triassic, just before they became true dinosaurs. Both dinosaurs and pterosaurs are in a group of reptiles known as the Ornithodirans. They can be identified by their similar ankle bones, but also more importantly, they both had hollow bones. The hollow bones of pterosaurs and dinosaurs make them very lightweight, and this may be the reason why this group of creatures have evolved to take to the air on so many occasions. The initial evolutionary push for developing the ability to glide or fly most likely came from climbing animals more likely being able to survive a fall if they are able to slow themselves down from falling. And if the creatures were more lightweight, it would make it more likely for them to go down this path. One unanswered question though is why were they nowhere near as successful as birds or other flying creatures and never go on to evolve powered flight? Other membraned flyers, like bats, are one of the most numerous groups of mammals, and hundreds of pterosaur fossils have been discovered. But the Sansoriopterygids are only known from a handful of fossils, and relatively speaking, the family was discovered fairly recently, meaning that it is likely they weren't that common, or at least were nowhere near as successful as bats or pterosaurs. One reason for this may be that they were not able to adapt and spread out due to the competition with birds. The earliest undisputed bird was Archaeopteryx, that lived about 150 million years ago. And although it wasn't thought to be a great flyer, most scientists believe that it would have been capable of powered flights, because the bone that its flight muscles would have been attached to was comparable to modern birds. Its wings matched modern birds that flap their wings to fly short distances. This would mean that at the time, Scansoriopterygids would have likely been in competition with birds, and so they never lasted very long. So E. Chi and the other Scansoriopterygids had a fairly brief history in the late Jurassic period, and wouldn't go on to dominate the skies like many other gliding or flying animals. But they show an interesting experiment of evolution, and show how the evolution of dinosaur to bird was not a simple story. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.